hey what's up guys this, uh, this is akshay from as learning and today in this video we'll be seeing how to use lalava in python okay so in the previous video we saw what lalava is how it is different from gpt4 uh, we saw some basic details about the model and we also saw how to use it in hugging face pieces okay uh, and in this video we'll be seeing how to use the lalava model with python okay so let's start with the video okay so your so your i am using my t4 compute unit okay and uh, the uh, your i set the code to run because it takes time to run so hence i did it and now let's understand the code step by step okay so first here i'm doing a change of directory into content cloning the version 1.0 of lalava and then doing a change of directory into lalava and then I'm installing into quiet mode, radio. Okay. Now uh, uh, here we are using the magic command CD. Okay. And uh, not the exclamation uh, and plus CD. Okay. Uh, uh, as we know that we can use exclamation uh, for uh, running the shell commands into Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter uh, Notebook or uh, Google Colab, okay, but here we have went ahead with the magic command CD, but not the exclamation CD, okay. So the reason for that is that uh, uh, the impact of the magic command is sustained uh, across the IPython uh, environment, that is the entire notebook itself. If you do uh, exclamation mark CD uh, using a cell into Google Colab or Jupyter Notebook, it will run, okay, but the impact would only be limited to that cell itself, okay, because we want it to impact the entire, because we want the impact to across the entire uh, kernel and notebook, hence we are using the magic command CD, okay, and although we are not using radio here, uh, but uh, I, I've, I've, I think from where I referred the code, uh, it was there, okay. Uh, now the next thing is, uh, let's import the required packages. So here I'm importing auto tokenizer, which I'll be using for tokenizing for uh, tokenization activity. Okay. And, uh, bits and bytes config. Okay. So how exactly auto tokenizer works is, uh, it, we have auto tokenizers and, uh, and, uh, this, uh, casual, uh, uh, language model classes okay they are built in this way that uh, uh, you they are you just need to tell about uh, the model okay and it will take care of the required tokenizer which is associated with that model okay so it uh, eases your task of tokenization or even loading the model okay so these uh, classes of uh, transformer package they are coded in this way that you just need to pass your model paths just a second yeah so you just need to pass your uh, model paths and just be carefree enough that you will be getting the appropriate tokenizer and the appropriate model okay you do you don't need to worry about uh, because e uh, because each model has its own tokenizers okay and even each model ha has their own weights okay and here uh, bits and bytes config is used for uh, model quantization. So what is model quantization? It's a technique used to reduce the precision of the numbers in the machine learning model, like uh, activations and weights. Okay. So uh, generally they are into 32, uh, 32 floating point bits. Okay. Uh, we, we, we want them into lower bits. So why do we want them into lower bits for uh, for for installing the models on not so efficient hardwares? We want higher model speed. Okay, we want higher inference speed. Okay, so for such things we use quantized versions of the model. Okay, and one of the way of doing quantized versions is using the bits and bytes config. Okay. There are some other ways also, okay, so which you can read about them on Google or on Hugging Face website, okay. 
So here we are using the 4-bit quantized version of the model. So we discussed about what model quantization is, okay? And uh, we are using the version 1.5 with 13 billion parameter and the size of the model is 3 GB, okay? Hmm. Then what we are doing is we are setting up our keyword, uh, keyword arguments here, which we will be passing for loading the model from our Lalava, Lalama for casual, large model class okay now what this uh, keyword arguments mean exactly device map auto means that whichever hardware is uh, available use them whether it's cpu or gpu use them load in 4 bit because our model is a 4 bit quantized model okay then we have some other parameters which are being used in the quantization config that is we want to use double quantization and the quantization type uses nf4 and we also want to have the compute d type as torch float 16 okay so uh, if you want to learn about what double quantization is what is nf4 okay i highly recommend you to go on the official documentation page of bits and bytes config okay they have explained in much detail of how uh, these things work okay uh, this would go somewhat out of the scope of the video okay so hence i'm uh, hence i'm not covering it Okay, now we have our uh, keyword arguments in place and we are then loading our model. Okay, uh, we have kept the parameter low CPU memory usage as true. Okay, we want to keep the memory usage low. And here you must have seen that uh, if it is a Lalava model, why are we seeing a Lalama? Okay, why Lalava, Lalama for casual LM? The reason for that is Lalava has been fine tuned on the base model of Lalava of Lalama. Lalama is the base model on which uh, showing lots of image and text tagged uh, uh, supervised data set labels Lalama has been fine tuned on. Okay. Uh, then we here are loading a tokenizer okay, from the auto tokenizer package. Now here uh, you must be seeing use fast is equal to false. Now what is use fast? Now, auto tokenizers uh, like Hugging Face have two types of tokenizers. Okay, so how use fast is equal to false works is Hugging Face has two, two, two types of tokenizers. The one is the slow one, uh, which is Python based and the another one is a fast one, which is Rust based. Okay. Now here we have kept the flag as false, hence the slow one will be used. Slow Python based tokenizer will be used here. Yeah. So uh, now next is what is we would be needing the get vision tower class of the model for using its image uh, processor for doing the image preprocessing activity. Okay. So here we have loaded the required class and we would be using the image processor later on for the pre-processing activity okay then here we have imported some required packages and required variables okay here uh, so here they have given two options so the first one is that if the image is being stored at some cloud location it will be loaded using a request.get okay or if it is, let's say, if you can upload the image here via this upload command and use the image in that way also. Okay. Uh, let's see now the next things. Yeah. Now this is the main part. Okay. Like what exactly is happening when when you give a image and let's say a prompt to Lalava. Let's see. Ha. Huh. So here you can see that. Uh, uh, we will come to this part okay now here uh, now here you can see that i have been uh, passing my image and i am passing the prompt describe the image and color details of this image here okay and then it is running okay i'll uh, rerun it again okay meanwhile we'll go here above yes so now once the image is loaded now next what we'll be doing is we need to we need to make our input ids available so that we uh, we can pass them to model dot generate function okay and uh, then uh, let's see this function like what exactly are, are, are the parameters passed we are passing our input ids 
विच वुड कंटेन द इमेज एंड द प्रॉम टोकन्स ओके सो विल सी अबाउट हाउ वी कम अप विद दिस इनपुट आई डीज लेटर बट दिस इनपुट आई डीज विल कंटेन द इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट आर पास इमेज एंड द पास प्रॉम्स ओके then the next would be image tensor this image tensor is nothing but the pre process output of our image okay so as you can see that this image processor object of get vision uh, tower class uh, is being used here and we are using its pre process function okay and here what we are doing is we are uh, if let's say the image was if let's say the image was loaded into 32 32 bit uh, floating 32 bit it would get half down okay and then the tensors are uh, are being passed to cuda that is a gpu or uh, our gpu okay so the image tensor is nothing but our pre process output okay and the input id contains the the token the uh, to the tokenized information of the image and the prom passed then we have kept the do sample flag as true temperature is kept to 0.2 max new token is 1024 use cache true and stopping criteria is been set now what is do sample true now do sample true means that instead of picking the most probable next token the model will sample the next token based on, uh, on its probability distribution okay now how it works is we have we had a image and we were asking a question to the image okay now now the model is generating an answer for it okay now instead of picking the most probable next token okay what it will do is it will sample out based on its probability distribution and then it will give the answer so this brings a randomness into the generation process okay it is becoming less deterministic and the same thing happens with temperature also temperature ranges uh, temperature goes from 0 to 2 okay the lower the temperature value the more the more deterministic it is and the higher the, the temperature value the more random it is okay so so temperature is also used for controlling the randomness of the generated output okay max new token is the number of uh, max new tokens uh, allowed we we have kept here is 1024 use cache it is equal to true it means that it will be taking into consideration the previous computed uh, 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 previous computed uh, hidden states in the generation process okay and we have also kept a stopping criteria now what is the stopping criteria here we have set a stopping criteria so it works in this way that if let's say the model generated some some tokens let's say some kind of a token and we have been setting those tokens into this keyword list okay which we are calling as stop string okay if let's say model generate such tokens you need to stop there okay so the, so we are setting a stopping criteria also okay now we saw what what was image tensor do uh, do sample true temperature max new tokens uh, use cache and stopping criteria let's see about the image uh, sorry the input ids now okay now to get to the input ids what we do is we are activating our conversational mode okay we have a conversational template which we are taking a copy of the template we are setting our roles okay we are telling that okay now this role zero is nothing but a user okay so we are telling him that the user is giving this prompt the below prompt here right describe the image and the color details okay and then we have a role one kept as none so so it is just like we are tag uh, giving him the context and we have set the roles and now we want to give him give the answer no, sorry we want the answer uh, we want the answer from lalawa in place of the none value okay so it is just like you uh, the user is giving this input these are the image tokens please tell me the answer okay so it it is working in this way okay so your we have some identifiers for the image okay we have a image start token image end token and in middle we have the image token 
okay and then we have the input which uh, which is the prompt coming from the user so this is my image okay this is my prompt coming from the user we are appending it into some kind of a template okay the way we have prompt templates okay the way we use prompt templates in langchain uh, haystack or lalama index in this way this is some kind of a template okay we are taking that template okay we are tokenizing it okay and then we are passing those input ids to our model to generate okay here this unsqueeze zero is taking care that uh, because we it happens in the way of batch normalization we want our matrices to be in appropriate shape so this unsqueeze zero takes care that the <coughs> the input ids generated are with the appropriate batch dimension sizes okay now setting all these parameters it goes into the model dot generate function okay once my output ids are generated i'm using the tokenizer for decoding those output ids and finally i'm getting my output so in this case this was my image this is my prompt and these are my converted output ids from the tokenizer okay now this was the image passed here this is a standard image which is available on the github of lalava okay and uh, i i asked him that describe the image and color details so it told me that the image features a wooden pier extending out into a large body of water makes sense possibly a lake or a bay ha uh, it can be a bay okay. ha okay fine consider it can be a bay but it's it's probably a lake more the pier is surrounded by serene landscape with a forest visible in background very appropriate the water appears to be calm very appropriate the scene has a peaceful and tranquil atmosphere the pier itself is brown in color and the water is deep blue it is bang on it is bang on right okay now so i'll just tell you one thing i like i have played with this image and this prompt like 10 15 times before coming up with this video and i have seen the cases where it hallucinated okay so so uh, some of the cases where it, where it hallucinated was the color detail uh, i have seen it tell that uh, this entire image is into black and white uh, landscape okay i have also seen him give the color wrong also okay so it tells that there there is a problem of hallucination okay uh, into lalava okay and definitely with more uh, we have be, uh, we have different ways of controlling hallucinations also okay and uh, yes uh, then we can use those different techniques for controlling the hallucinations and make this model more better okay what are the those techniques of controlling hallucinations and uh, how we can improve the model uh this like that topic is out of the scope of this video okay but you can read about them how to control hallucination i think currently the entire llm community's biggest challenge is increasing the inference speed and controlling hallucinations okay and the multi model aspect also text has been cracked almost cracked uh but yeah now we are moving towards multi model okay So this is all uh, what I had in this video. Uh, if you find anything helpful in this video, or if you learn anything new, do give a like, uh, share this video. Uh, it really motivates me uh, of putting more and more, more, more efforts and coming up with the best possible content which I can come up. Okay, yeah. Take care. Peace out.